Threads are most often visualized in a simplified manner on drawings. It is important to note that the actual 3D models are also almost always shown in a simplified state. This is for two reasons. One, so that people don't try to measure the threads on a drawing. And two, 3D threads, which are made up of helical surfaces and features, are extremely memory consuming on a computer, meaning it would bog down the machine and cause performance issues. Most threads will be annotated with certain standard information. Diameter, threads per inch for inch threads, or thread pitch for metric, thread type or tolerance class, and depth or length if applicable. A thread has three diameters involved, major, minor, and pitch cylinder. This terminology is applied to both external and internal threads. Unless otherwise specified, the pitch cylinder is the diameter used for inspection according to the ASME standards. Let's take a look at the threads per inch and thread pitch callouts for inch and metric threads. Inch threads are measured as threads per inch. Threads per inch means exactly what it says, the number of threads that exist within a single inch. If we count the threads within this inch of thread, we see that there are 10 threads per inch. For metric threads, we measure the thread pitch. This is the distance between two adjacent threads. If we measure between two adjacent threads, we measure 1.5 millimeters. Note that ASME and ISO standards always default to the coarse pitch. But what does this mean? Let's pretend we look at a drawing that says only a quarter inch on a thread callout. If we look up a quarter inch on a drill and tap chart, we see two options, a quarter inch 20 and a quarter inch 28. How do we know which one to use? Remember that inch threads are measured as threads per inch. The coarse thread will always be the lower number, quarter inch 20, because there are fewer threads per inch. Fewer threads means the threads per inch is more coarse. Let's pretend that we have a similar situation on a metric drawing, where the thread callout only says M8. We again look it up in a drill and tap chart, and we see two options, M8 by 1.25 and M8 by 1. Which one is coarse? Remember that metric threads are measured as thread pitch which is the distance between threads. The coarse thread is the M8 by 1.25 because there is a greater distance between threads. A larger distance between threads means the thread pitch is more coarse. For ASME and inch threads, the simple way to remember this is that the coarse thread is the smaller number. For ISO and metric threads, the larger number is the coarse thread. Since ASME and ISO always default to the coarse pitch, drill and tap charts will always display the coarse thread first, regardless if it's inch or metric. Now let's take a very quick look at the thread types and tolerance classes. These subjects are incredibly detailed and complex, so we won't go into much detail on this course. What is important that you understand is the fact that these tolerance systems drive how tight or loose a thread fit is. Here's a simplified chart showing some metric tolerance classes. Using our metric example above, the fact that the H is a capital letter tells us that we have an internal thread. The H itself tells us that we have a tight tolerance since it is closer to the perfect fit line. The six puts it in the middle of the H range of tolerances. Now let's look at a simplified chart showing inch tolerance classes. Using our inch example above, we see that 2A means we have an external thread in the middle of the pack. Again, we are not going into detail on purpose here. This is just a high level overview to give you an understanding of how thread types and tolerance classes can drive the thread fit. 
Specific tolerances are chosen for various reasons. For a precise fit without slop, to allow for dirt or paint, or to reduce the cost of manufacturing. For more detail, see the standards referenced above. Depth and length values on a thread indicate the minimum perfect thread. This translates to the usable thread. Using this example, you can see the measurement is taken from the outside surface to the last full thread. Notice the small piece of incomplete thread to the right of the dimension is not included. Any incomplete threads shall fall outside of this dimension. Our goal is to be your best source for GDT information online. It's important to us that everyone involved in engineering and manufacturing have the chance to learn and better understand GDT on your prints. We have many free resources to help you get started on your learning journey. Subscribe to our GDT community using the link in the description below or visit our website. Test your knowledge with our GDT and print reading quizzes, download helpful charts, and access articles written by our training experts.